Hello friends, happy 2023. I hope you've had the most amazing start to the new year, that you're stepping into new year, better you, all of this kind of stuff. And I hope that you're joining my hashtag men don't spend challenge. Before we forget all about 2022, I wanna reflect a little bit. Today, I wanna have a chat with you about my most used handbags of 2022. Also, I'm gonna film a video about the handbags I haven't used at all in 2023. If I say 2023 going forward in this video, I mean 2022. <laughs> I think mentally I've already moved on, but we need to reflect because reflection is key if we want to improve in life, right? So 2022. That's what we're talking about today. And I would say the general theme of the handbags I've worn the most in 2022 have basically been mid-sized, easygoing, carefree handbags. Obviously, that has not really been the trend of 2022. The bag fashion has been more, it started on like the micro bag trend, so like tiny bag energy. Then later on in the year, we moved on to the like YSL Can I or whatever, no, what's it called? I Care? I, Ikare, what, whatever it's called, you know, that huge like dumpster bag kind of bag with a huge YSL logo. Oh my gosh, that is so ugly. Don't tell anyone I said that, but <laughs> I think that bag is hideous. But the bags I've been wearing the most in 2022 have mainly been like mid-sized, easygoing, carefree bags. The first one on the list is my little Saint Laurent Sac de Shore. This is one of my favorite handbags ever. This is so easy going, especially due to like the croc embossed treated leather. Like this bag, I don't wanna jinx it now, but I think this bag is indestructible, <laughs> literally. <laughs> it's so like, so rigid, like if I squeeze it, like nothing moves. Do you see? I'm squeezing, but nothing happens. I can like scratch this, nothing happens. You see, it's just continuing to shine literally brighter than the sun with this light. <laughs> I love the fact that it has like the um, accordion style sides. I think that looks so chic, so timeless, so luxurious. So like I am aging with grace and I am here and I'm a large and in charge. Now, this is not a large bag. This is the Saint Laurent Sac de Jour Nano, which obviously means it's a quite small bag. I have made a review about it if you want to see like what fits and stuff, but this has been like like my easy going, like if I'm going for a little errand and stuff and I just need like my bare essentials, so my two phones, my Louis Vuitton key and card holder, the best SLG ever, and like a little lippy or like a little hand sanitizer or a mask or whatever I need, right? I just plop it in here, run out to the pharmacy or whatever I'm doing and I'm out the door. And I think it also adds a little bit of like edge to an outfit because it's quite rigid. I didn't mean edge in terms of like edge a corner, you know, but it brings some edginess, I wanna say. It looks quite like formal, quite rigid. The croc embossing, I think it makes it look quite like rocker chic or like a little bit edgy and stuff like that, which I think can add to my otherwise pretty like timeless, classic, boring, like grandma chic aesthetic. And I think this one adds a little bit of interest to that, you know? And it's a little bit of an unexpected pop to an outfit of mine. It's just a brilliant bag. It's one of my most used in 2023, 2022, Amanda, not 2023. And I reckon this will continue to be one of my most worn into 2023 as well, because it's just such a solid bag and I love it so much. If you don't already have a Saint Laurent Sac de Shirt and you're thinking about it, would highly recommend. Especially in the nano size, I think it's the cutest one. And it still fits quite a bit for being such a like small looking bag, you know? On a similar train of thought in terms of like a mid-sized, easy-going, carefree handbag is my Mulberry Base Water Satchel. Why was that so difficult to say? Mulberry Base Water Satchel. Try saying that quickly 10 times and see if you get through, but I wouldn't. <laughs> Anyhow, my Mulberry Base Water Satchel. This one obviously also has a shoulder strap. I also have a review for this one, so if you want to know more details, I would recommend you to check out my review. But basically, this this bag has seen me through so many trips, so many like supermarket runs, so many like farmer's market runs, everything. This bag 
is so great. She's so easy going. The leather is just so smooth. It, it is softer, obviously. It is more squishy than the Saint Laurent Sac de Cher. But what this bag has that the Saint Laurent Sac de Cher doesn't have is a secure closing, which I do enjoy in some instances. You know, if you're going to the farmer's market, it's a lot of people. It's nice to have like a little closing to your bag so that people can't just like dip their hand in your bag and pick something up if they want to, you know? My Mulberry base water satchel. This is my perfect little farmer's market bag. This was also one of my most used in 2021, so I would expect this is going to be one of my most used in 2023 as well. This bag is not produced anymore at Mulberry, by the way, so if you want to check this bag out, you will have to check secondhand, but I don't think that's a con. I think we should always check secondhand first. Obviously with this one, you can only check secondhand in general. I don't think these hold value on the secondhand market that well. So don't hold me to it, but I would assume that you can score yourself a good deal on a very practical and useful bag on like Vestir Collective or something like that. So one of my most used handbags of 2022 has been my Mulberry Base Water Satchel. Ta-da! I mean, you saw it coming, didn't you? Also, one of my most used handbags of 2022, oh my gosh, I'm so struggling to not say 2023, has been my Hermes Evelyn PM. I bought this one for myself as a birthday gift back in February. I'm born in February. I'm a Pisces. What zodiac sign are you? I would love to know. <laughs> But anyhow, this bag has literally seen me through so many trips and I have loved wearing this bag, literally. I think she's so chic, she's so timeless. No one knows it's a branded bag unless you know that you know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How many times can I say no in one sentence? If you don't know, then it just looks like a chic piece of leather, you know? But if you know, then you know it's an Hermes bag. And I kind of like that actually, because especially when traveling, I'm not sure if I want to have like a huge logo on my bag that says like, I'm an expensive bag. I mean, if you're a pickpocket, I would assume they go for the people with the like branded bags. I love this bag. She's so easygoing. You just throw her over your your shoulder, your hands free, and you can live your best life. Literally, I was looking through my photos, <laughs> and in most of my photos, I was wearing this bag or another bag, which I always wear to work, which if you're a regular on my channel, you know which one it is, but we'll come to that one next. But this bag I've worn so much. I love it so much. I cannot imagine a life without my Armas Evelyn now after I've owned this one for like almost a year. And you know, towards the end of the year, I was reflecting on which bags I've loved the most. And when doing that, I kind of bought another one of my Armas Evelyns, which you probably already no. As an honorable mention, my Hermes Evelyn GM in this like delicious chocolate brown shade. I've also worn this one a lot. I bought it now in October, so I can't really say that it's been my most used handbag of 2022, obviously, because I've only owned it for like a quarter of the year. But in saying that, in this quarter, I've legit worn this one every chance I've gotten, right? <laughs> honorable mention, my Hermes Evelyn GM. And like I said, if you're a seasoned subscriber or a Seedler Aesthetic family member, you know the bag that's next up. And it's obviously my Prada Double in the size large. I legit wear this one every day when I go into the office. I bought it when I got my first big girl job back in 2018. And I've worn her every day to the office since. Sure, she has a little bit of corner wear, but I would say it's minimal considering how much I've worn it. Literally every day to the office, like on business trips, this bag is everything. I think she's so chic, she's so timeless, she's so luxurious. She doesn't have like a huge logo, which I do enjoy. I mean, it does say Prada on this little guy and it does say Prada here, but I think if you're not hugely in the designer space, then you probably don't really know that it's a designer bag. And sometimes when I bring it to business meetings, 
I wear this side to the front because then it just looks like a black handbag, you know? And then no one will know that it's a designer bag. So if you don't want to show logos in your workspace, then that's a tip from yours truly. Just turn your bag around and live your best life. I do want to start wearing some other bags in my work bag rotation because I'm a little bit scared that this one will wear out at some point. Not that she's showing any signs of wearing out, but equally just for like not wearing her every day. I want to start wearing another bag. And sneak peek, I have bought another little bag right here, which I'm thinking I'm gonna start wearing to the office a little bit. It's a little Celine tote bag, which I think is so cute. It has the Triumph logo, or is that what it's called? The Triumph monogram? Anyhow, I think it's so cute. I'm so looking forward to starting wearing that one as well. For 2022, this has been my like workhorse every day going to the office work bag, right? And she's such a classic and classy timeless piece. So I don't expect I will stop wearing her in 2023 either. And staying on the Prada train for one moment, my most worn event bag of 2022 has been my Prada Cahir, literally. I love this bag so much. Similar to my Saint Laurent Sac de Jour Nano with a croc embossed leather, I think this one also adds a little bit of edginess to my look. I think it kind of adds an unexpected pop to my outfits because like I said, I like wearing like timeless, classic, classy, or at least classy in my opinion, looks, right? That doesn't really show a lot of logo. It doesn't show a lot of skin. It looks like I'm like that stylish grandma at the little coffee shop sipping my coffee. You know, that's the look I'm going for. But anyhow, my Prada Cahir, it's like a little art piece to your outfit. You know, I used to really want one of those Olympia Latin book clutches, you know, the ones with different sewn patterns. I don't know what it's called, but they basically look like books or like a little art piece or something like that. I used to really want one of those. But when I bought this one, that kind of want went away because this one kind of does the same job. It adds interest. It adds some like interesting vibes to your outfit. It's a, obviously a leather bag, so it will stand the test of time better than something made of like threads sewn on like fabric and all of that kind of stuff. Off. My thumb just made a weird noise. I'm sorry about that. But you know, this has been my favorite event bag. I've worn it to literally every event I've gone to, like dinners, both casual and formal. I've worn it to a gala. I've worn it to like just little coffee shop dates with my friends, you know, everything. She can do everything. So get yourself a product here that does everything. She is kind of heavy, so if you're very sensitive to heavy bags, then maybe this is not the bag for you, but I think the heaviness adds to the look because she feels substantial, she feels large and in charge. She can protect you if there are like mean people in the street, you can like hit them with it. No, <laughs> don't do that, that was mean, but she's just the best little event bag ever. So I'm so happy to have it in my collection and it has been one of my most worn handbags in 2022. And now for the last bag on my list, it's a bonus item. It's a little bit of, I mean, it's not really a handbag, but I want to mention it because I've worn this bag literally on every trip I've gone on. And I think it's the best bag, one of the best bags I've ever bought, if I'm going to be completely honest. So I have to mention it, obviously. And this is going to be a little bit awkward, but it's my... <laughs> How am I going to do this? I am too weak, <laughs> but it's my Remova Classic Cabin luggage. I love this bag so much. I've worn it on like every trip I have gone on, I think, it, apart from a trip where I cannot hold this up anymore. I'm too weak, but I brought it on like every trip I've gone on. This Remova classic cabin luggage, maybe just one little look for reference, but I think she looks so chic, so timeless, so classic, so luxurious. Like if you travel with one of these and you see someone else traveling with it, you will have like one of those moments like, yes, you're also a pro traveler. You know how to do this world, you know? <laughs> so this bag, 
I love it so much. I think it's so chic. It gives me like a luxurious travel vibe every time I travel. I know it's not a handbag and I know it's not like a typical designer item, but I love it so much. So I wanted to mention it. If you're thinking about buying a Remova Classic Cabin luggage, I know they're ridiculously expensive. I wouldn't pay the retail price now. Try to find it secondhand if you can. Now my hands are really like dusty from that bag, but if you can, try to find your Remova Classic Cabin luggage secondhand because I think they're now like $1,200. And spending $1,200 on luggage, I think it's kind of stale. Why do they cost so much? It's literally a piece of metal. Surely it doesn't call for $1,200 retail price, you know? But mine actually did lose one of its wheels this year, which was not ideal. But I talked to the Remova people. They had the most lovely customer service staff. They fixed it for me for free. I just sent it off. To Germany, they fixed it. I didn't even have to pay for any shipping, anything. Not even the wheels. They were just like, no, it's fine. We'll fix it for you. So honestly, I think that experience also made me a little bit more happy, content, loyal to Remova as a brand. And I just think like a brand taking such pride in their quality that they will give you like a lifetime guarantee. I think that speaks volumes in terms of their quality and their craftsmanship and all of this kind of stuff. So I'm so happy with my Remova Classic Cabin luggage. So if you have been thinking about buying one of those bags, it has the Seedler stamp of approval anyway. So do with that what you will. But guys, those that was a sad clap. Those were all of the handbags that I've worn the most in 2022. Which handbags have you been wearing the most in 2022? I would love to know. Please let me know in the comments below because that will obviously give me some inspiration of what handbags to look into next and that you think are handbags worth investing in. And guys, thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you have some more time to spend with me today, I'll link two videos right here, which I think you would enjoy. And until my next video, stay safe, take care, and I will see you soon, and happy 2023. Bye!